I just felt like I smelled poop. Last time we covered Chris LaFawn, aka Airsoft Fatty, things were not good. In fact, they were worse than ever. He had had numerous meltdowns on livestream, and he was also about to be evicted from his home. He had nowhere to go, and he was sure to let his chat know that he would soon be homeless. And for a while, it was looking like that would be the case. Until Fatty received an offer to join an internet game show called Fish Tank Live. Fish Tank is like Big Brother meets the Eric Andre show. The contestants are being put through hell by the hosts, and the last one standing wins. While Fatty was not a traditional contestant, he was allowed to stay in the house, compete in challenges for money, eat food. This was a role that they quickly branded the Freeloader. And Chris would produce some absolutely iconic clips in his time on Fish Tank. While I'm showing you these clips, I want you to keep in mind that this all happened live and there were thousands of people watching. The first one I'm going to show you takes place a couple days after Chris's arrival. You see, the crew could tell that Fatty was lonely, and they decided to take it upon themselves to get him a personal masseuse for the night. Hilarity would ensue when this lady of the night would decline services on Chris after a unfortunate discovery. Unlike Betty, which you were not interested in and had no no tension, no uh, sexual or romantic interest at all, she is not vegan. So I wanted to hand you this. He doesn't like vegan girls at all. She's got the big meat. Big meat. Yeah. I'm yeah she's doing herself. Where's the beef? Oh, you can. Maybe you you on Chris? You can make this How long are you here for? I don't know if you How long as you want me here for? I'm here for you. I'm out. You more of a sweet drink kind of guy? That's I'm disgusting. That's what you do. Oh! Chris, you guys have a little fun? I'll be back down in about 1520. You're going to go clean up, Chris? Yeah! You look clean. You just took a shower. He's got a line up. He's got a line up. He's got to get a line up. He said, I ain't cleaning up. What did you tell me? Trust me. You did just get out of the shower. Like an hour ago. You're going to waste too much time, buddy. Trust me. Yeah, dude, just put on some fucking shorts and let's go, dude. Yeah, trust me, bro. I only need a quick one. It won't. Dude, you've got, you just showered. Five minutes already. Dude, it we're going to write up in five minutes, no problem. Yeah? No. Don't do it, man. Trust me. Girls like pheromones. We could start off with the massage, okay? And then we will see how much time you want to do, and then we'll go from there. Is that cool? Do whatever amount of time you want to do. You can lay down and I'll start off and with a massage, we'll get into the mood and then we will go from there. What do you think? Honestly, I'm scared to lay down on my lie. Because I feel like the bed is kind of dirty. I'm scared to lay down on that bed. And honestly, I'm so sorry, but I was like massaging you. There's something on like yeah, it's your the old, butt crack. Old stains from fucking airsofting. What's that? Old stains from airsofting sliding dirt. Okay, I'm like it looks like poop stains. I got scared. Like, yeah, I don't know. I'm just you know. I just felt like I smelled poop a little bit. I don't know why. Like I feel like I smell poop. So, I don't know if I could do it. Of course, Sam would pull her to the side and try to convince her to go back and give it a second try, but it was no dice. 
This would cause an already mentally fractured Chris to break down even further. Getting turned down by a lady of the night because you smell of feces is going to be quite the hit to your pride and ego. But in my opinion, Fatty is already more mentally unstable because of one of the two main rules the game show has. There are really only two rules to fish tank. A. Don't go outside. And B. No weed. The crew knew that if they deprived Fatty of one of the things he was most addicted to in life, that he would be worth his weight in gold on camera. And they were right, because one day, Fatty went absolutely insane when another member of the fish tank stole and hid his bag. Oh, someone took his bag? I didn't take it. Oh, he wants to mess with everything, but if he gets really mad, he wants to take it. Hey, he's pulling a Sylvia. I gotta give a big shout out to Random Fish Tank Clips for putting that little fatty emoji over all the uh, stuff that no one should ever have to see. Thank you again, Random Fish Tank Clips. Now that Chris had proven he was not afraid to confront everyone at once, I knew it was only a matter of time before he had a severe personal issue with another contestant. And that is exactly what happened when a new trend began to emerge in the fish tank. Contestants had began to throw various liquids at each other, whether it be condiments from the fridge or water from the sink. They began to drench each other in all these disgusting fluids. Chris was very fond of doing this to people, and when he covered a particularly thin-skinned contestant's shirt with mustard, they had a slight disagreement. I don't know shit. That's all you gotta fucking say. Okay, well, don't yell. You don't need more fucking tears. Okay, well, don't fucking yell. Like first day with the real. Yeah, well, you should fucking shut up because I'm fucking real and I'll say shit to your face every fucking time. The other contestant would have a meltdown, breaking a couple of things and throwing chemicals at Fatty, who would quickly run downstairs and hide behind Sam, Jet, and the crew. The beef would quickly be squashed when they both agreed to a slap fight, one where Fatty would absolutely get decimated. I am! Mm, that was a good slap. That was my turn. Alright, man. Cool, guys. Chris had had confrontations with almost everyone in the house. 
He was extremely on edge, and the audience of Fish Tank quickly noticed this. For a certain amount of money, you could either pay to have a sound effect spoken through a speaker, or you could pay to have your message read off. Well, one morning when Chris is trying to get a little extra sleep, someone starts spamming TTS, and Chris does not take this very well. of things I should point out here, Chris was originally sleeping on the bed in the master bedroom, until he urinated all over it and made basically no one want to touch it anymore. Another thing is Chris's lack of clothes. He would walk around the tank naked often, with little regard to the female contestant's wishes. I truly believe that he brought one shirt with him to Fish Tank, because I only saw him wear it when he arrived and there were multiple occasions where he stripped down to nothing. He would hit on almost every female that entered the tank, and after they rejected him, he would be increasingly passive-aggressive to them. Sometimes actually aggressive. More on that later. But I don't want you guys to think that this was all a horrible experience for Fatty because he had some good times too. I mean really wholesome moments, guys. Like the night him and well-known humanitarian Frank Hassel did a little bit of fun face painting. No, I don't! No, stop! You look It seemed like Chris was an almost never-ending source of content on Fish Tank. So far, Fatty has been rejected by an escort, said the N-word, put holes in the wall, and he screams at the talk-to-speech donations. I knew that him joining this show was going to be good, but I had no idea it was going to be this good. And then Fatty hit me with the funniest clip I've ever seen of him. I remember it all like it was yesterday. I had just tuned in, and people were making some kind of big commotion, and through all of that commotion, I deciphered someone saying that Chris had gotten hurt. And sure enough, when I looked on YouTube to try to find out what had happened, someone had already uploaded the whole thing. A lot of people speculate that Fatty planned that fall, but I gotta say, I think that even if he did plan it, he did not plan to take it so hardly. That was about two or three steps right to the old gunt. I believe he also bit his tongue during this because his speech was impaired for a couple hours after. It's honestly amazing that he didn't bite his tongue off or at least break a rib falling down the stairs as brutally as he did. And I don't know if you heard it, but these steps were slick with urine, which in and of itself is pretty gross. 
but not even nearly as bad as what we are about to discuss, folks. Because the next thing that I want to discuss is the grossest thing in the house challenge. Contestants were supposed to go all throughout the house and find the grossest thing they could. A thousand dollars was on the line. So people immediately start grabbing things that Chris has soiled, either the bed that he slept on or the shorts that he had. But then Chris brings in his item, and he is the hands-down winner. Chris's shorts that he pissed himself in. Spread them out so you can see the piss. What else is in there? That's it. It's just wet with piss? Yes. Is the whole, is that whole thing yeah. soaked? He was also wearing those, though. Oh, only has piss in it. Yeah, it's soaked. Oh, okay. So there's a good amount of piss on there. There's a lot of piss on here. Okay. Let's get go it, dance, uh, kill. kill. Let's, Let's go kill. dance, kill. Let's go dance, kill. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mr. Goldstriker, are you expecting to be in Creator Clash next year? I am, yeah. I'm sorry to make the clip so short, but I decided in making this that I don't want you guys to see this. I'm just going to explain to you what Chris has in his hands at this moment. He has a piece of toilet paper that has been freshly used by himself, and that is his submission for the challenge, one that I think would have won in the first place. It's absolutely disgusting. He describes what he's been eating, he holds it up to the camera. I really felt like throwing up during this one, guys. But that's not even the end of it, because Sam tells him that the piece of toilet paper and the stuff that is attached to it are two separate items. So Chris has to get the stuff off, and then it can be his item. So Chris does that with his bare hands, presents it to Sam and the camera, and proceeds to win $1,000. Again, I am sorry that the clip was so short, but I did not want you guys to see that. It is very, very gross. But I think it gives you a clear insight as to where Chris's mind is during this game show. He wants to make some money, because he is homeless right now, he doesn't have a house. But this is one of those things about Airsoft Fatty that will never leave my mind every time I watch him now. It's, it's gonna be the guy that did this. And that's very damaging to an online career. Surprisingly though, it is not the biggest attempt at character assassination that he has tried during his time on Fish Tank. Because one day he would take it to the next level. Earlier in the video I discussed the increasing trend of the contestants throwing strange liquids onto each other. And after doing this to one of the female contestants, she sought revenge upon Chris. She proceeded to hide in the bathroom until Chris went up to the master bedroom and doused him with soup. Chris had no more clean clothes and he'd also gone about two weeks without smoking at this point. And when she covered him in his last good pair of shorts and soup, something snapped in Chris and he raged harder than I've ever seen before. Lenny hates hearing that Simmons book, Please Gather the Fish and John, for real. That's what you were going to do with my stuff, wasn't it? I was going to take you in your fucking sleep. Thanks a lot, I got no clean clothes now. Nice job playing with my pads. <laughs> Is that allowed? Now don't get mad to have it done to you. You don't have to change your clothes, you dumb whore! You have a fucking <laughs> change your fucking clothes! You have a full on change your clothes! I do! Don't fucking spit on me. I don't know what you want to know! No! 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 Chris, let's not break anything else. I'm not trying to slow your roll, but we cannot break anything else. There's a couple of crazy details about this clip that I did not notice the first time I watched it. The first and probably most remarkable one is that when Fatty got up and ran at Letty, he hit the side of the door frame and busted a chunk of wood completely off of it. They must be made at the same place that the cabinets are. Not gonna lie, kind of impressive on Fatty's part. But what isn't so impressive is how he unconsensually spits in a woman's face three times. 
Don't get me wrong, chat, this was one of my least favorite contestants on Fish Tank, but his behavior in there, especially towards the women, has been unacceptable in my opinion. He's been very creepy towards them, and then he's walking around the house completely naked, and now he's straight up assaulting them. I get that she threw soup on him, but he had done it to her before, and he'd done it to other people many times. Chris would also steal stuff from time to time just to stir up drama in the tank. He would only have problems when it happened to him. And this kinda seems to be a reoccurring issue with Chris, especially in his time on Fish Tank. And as crazy as it sounds, this game show was just the boost that Fatty's career needed. The producers of the show were just as brutal on him as they were on the other contestants. But they also really cared about Chris, because they set up a GoFundMe where people could donate money so that after Chris left the fish tank, he wouldn't be homeless. The $10,000 goal was quickly met and exceeded. So when Chris did return home, he had made a couple thousand dollars from completing challenges, as well as around 13 grand from the GoFundMe they had set up. And though he had to go through hell to get it, it had seemed like Fatty had gotten a second chance. And he decided that with this money that he had been given, he would create a tiny home for himself in the middle of the woods. He went out and bought a large shed, and plans to create what he calls his forever home out of it. What's up ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy. I'm definitely not no Earl, but it's your boy Fatty. And today, I'm excited to announce that the Fatty Cave has finally been delivered. The shell that we're gonna work on, the place that shall become my forever home. And hopefully one day, maybe I'll bring a fan Francine home on my own. Home Sweet Cave. <laughs> that being said, as you guys can see, simple, simple, simple layout. So maybe, you know, I have a lady friend over, we get married, we want to fool around a little bit, well, maybe while she showers, I can take a shit. And, you know, get a little show, you know, a shit and show if you would. <laughs> <laughs> and then what I would love to do, I don't want to see, we've got two different lofts here. What I'd love to do is try to get, like, I don't know, make like a ladder to go up to that one specifically. But if I had to, probably would have to do that one. Either way, I do want to set up a sleeping area in the lofts. This is perfect. The dream's coming true. It's affordable. I own this. None of you haters out there can screw me over in my living situation anymore. This guarantees I got a roof over my head. And no, it's not the lap of luxury. This isn't a freaking mansion like Will Smith would have. But you know what? We're gonna make it into a mansion. We're gonna make this thing beautiful. The best part is, if I ever wanted to switch locations, this is gonna be the easiest thing to fucking move on Earth. So all you painters out there are like, oh, it's this good. No, it's potential. Potential is everything to me. Now don't get me wrong, 13 G's is a lot of money, but I guarantee you that shed took up over half of his budget. And there would be no way that Fatty could afford all of this if he didn't have a team of generous construction workers willing to build for free. The only conditions are that Fatty helps out and that he pays for the building supplies. I think that's really cool of these guys. They didn't have to do this. Fatty would kind of be screwed without them. Fully finishing a structure like that is thousands of dollars in labor, and Fatty simply cannot afford it. Not only are these guys extremely generous, but it seems like they are also very experienced in the field of construction. And they really have some cool plans for the place. Here's the lead builder discussing construction plans with Fatty. Here's our goal. We gotta, we've talked about the plans that we're going to do. We're going to start to get materials tomorrow, start to do the framing, start to get the electric in. We need to plan some other things like the position of where we're going to put the sinks where we're going to put the shower and exact the position of, of all the bathroom items. So uh, I feel pretty confident. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a tough job, but um, we'll get some uh, electric cable in tomorrow and uh, we'll do the framing and we'll be on the way. 
Sounds good to me. Yeah. Sounds good to me. All right, man. I'm not going to lie to you guys, when Airsoft Fatty said that he'd be making a tiny house in the middle of the woods, I was extremely skeptical. Sure, I thought he'd actually get the tiny house, but I thought that he'd have to fix it up himself, or he'd have to do multiple streams for months asking for money to get it worked on. And even then, I thought he'd be living in some sort of tar paper shack. The way I imagined it was so much more hillbilly than it turned out, guys. Because these gentlemen put in three days of hard labor to create one of the coolest tiny homes I've ever seen. The layout is perfect. These guys knew exactly what they were doing. They have this thing outfitted the best way it possibly could be. And not only is the layout amazing, but so is the design of the whole place. These guys knocked it out of the park. And now, the only thing I'm really concerned for is the upkeep. Because as we know, Chris does not have the best track record of taking care of his place of residence. With him being kicked out of his last two houses for various reasons. But this house is all Chris's. He's not going to have to pay a mortgage on it. I don't know what the situation with the land is, but he's only going to have to pay minimal taxes. And then, of course, his utilities. He also gave up all his cats for adoption before he went into fish tank, so at least this particular home of his won't be covered in feline feces. But there are still a couple of glaring problems regarding Fatty's house I see rearing their head in the near future. The first one I can think of is location. I don't know much about it, but it looks like it's out in the middle of nowhere, and I don't know if that's going to get him the kind of internet connection he needs, to continue to do his live streams. But that's all speculation. One I know for sure about is the fact that that house is going to sink into the mud little by little each year. It looks like they just put some paving stones underneath the house to keep it a couple inches elevated off the ground. He's already at a higher risk of insect problems, rodent problems, mold issues, but if that house spends a prolonged period of time down in the mud, it's going to begin to rot around him. So it's going to be very interesting to watch the evolution of the fatty shack, whether it be for better or for worse. It seems like Chris has been given a second chance, and we can all only hope that he doesn't squander it. And that's all we have on Airsoft Fatty for now, guys. You know me, I'm going to keep an eye on the situation, I'll keep you updated if anything happens. Chris plans to return to Fish Tank for Season 2 in the winter, so that's sure to be a non-stop source of content. This is not the last we've seen of Airsoft Fatty. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching, especially till the end. Big shout out to all my channel members. Love you guys. Thank you for the support. And I hope that you have a great day, night, afternoon, wherever you are. Just go have a good one. Take it easy. And be sure to keep it Kiwi. Oh! <laughs>